Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to connect a UDP hardware device to Ventus. As you might have figured out yourself, by now there's no possibility to have UDP input to Ventus, even not in Ventus 4. But I'm going to show you a way around that. And the first thing we are going to do is we create a serial to Ethernet or Ethernet to serial bridge with this tool by Altima Software. It's called Serial to Ethernet Connector. And what we do here is we create a UDP connection. We select the port that is available on our machine. On my machine it's COM3. We add the IP address of the UDP device, 192.168.178.54, and the port 10. Then you click on Create UDP Connection, and here's our connection, and you already see here it's connected. Then we bring up Ventus, and in Ventus we create an I.O., and this I.O. is going to be a serial. There you choose the COM part we've just created. You don't have to take care about this uh, connection speed and stuff like that. I'm just then you go to output, activate the live view, and as I've got no connection to a hardware device for the moment, I just made a little emulator. And as soon as I send data, you see here, we get messages. This is pretty handy because lots of hardware devices send their events via UDP. And I'm going to show you how to implement a typical protocol that is sent by UDP device. So welcome to part two of this tutorial on how to implement communication protocols. And the protocols we are going to talk about today is the protocol used by a company called Kissbox. And they produce boxes like these. They come with DMX, MIDI, and all sorts of in and outputs. But the thing we are going to talk about today is this uh, eight slot input output frame. And uh, it can hold lots of different in and outputs, pulse width modulation, uh, simple relays, and uh, yeah. Uh, what the protocol looks like is this. You will receive four bytes. And the first byte will be the type. So what type of uh, response is it. Uh, in the case of an event you will get a 3 as a hex. Uh, the second byte will be the slot and uh, in this case it's uh, slot uh, 4. And for the third byte it will be the input. So uh, input from 0 to 8. So this is input 1. And the last byte, byte 4, represents the state and in this case the input is in the state on. If it's zero, it's in a state off. And to show you how to implement this, we are going to switch over to Ventus. Let's create all the nodes we need. The first node we are going to need is, of course, the input node. In this case, again, a serial. And we already set it to COM3. The next thing we need is a script node. Just close this for the moment. And then we are going to need eight array indexes. Um, we'll find them in processors array indexer. And they will be of type Boolean. And they will have the length of eight. And we are going to need eight of these. And to make it more obvious. We call them for the slots. So copy, paste, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we call them slot and the number. them a little bit so we have a better overview later on and 
this array indexer will later on hold our input states and they will tell us when an input state has changed. And now we're going to do the script. The first thing we have to do here is defining our inputs and outputs. Our input will be a string. We call it response. We will connect this one with the serial output later on. And we need some Boolean arrays and we call them slot and the number, in this case slot 1 to slot 8, and we create 7 more. And then we can start with the script. The first thing we add is system.txt. This will provide us with some encoding and conversion features. The next thing up here Boolean temporary array where we keep the states and it's actually a two-dimensional array which has you could look at it like a, an 8x8 table where each row presents a slot of our frame. The next part has something to do with uh, keeping a, a good structure of your message. It isn't really needed with a four byte long uh, message structure but uh, it's good to, to, to have a look at what, what you normally would do if you have like a really long message structure or a very complicated one. You should create a structure that represents your message. In this case you see we have a command, a slot, an input and a state. In this case here we do a conversion what you see here is it is an implicit operator so whenever in your code uh, some when later on we are going to uh, do something like message um, is b and b will be the bytes we got from the response and we automatically assign every byte in the byte array to its representative in the message and as it is much easier later on to have state as a boolean we do a, a conversion Right, so this is not a byte, it's a boolean. So let me delete that. And the next thing has something to do with string conversion. If you want to get the bytes from a string, you have to define some sort of encoding. So I don't want to go too much into detail about encodings. It has something to do with which value represents which character. So we are not not really into the character thing, but what we need uh, later on is 0 to 256 values. So, when we initialize this script, or when the script is executed the first time, we want to set, we want to set all the rows in our temporary array to false. And as I said before, we have to create an encoding. In this case, uh, the encoding is ISO 8859-1. Uh, as I said, I don't want to go too deep into encoding details. This is just uh, to get um, byte representations of 0 to 256. And in our validate function, which gets executed every time our input input value changes, we uh, we define a byte array that holds uh, the byte representation of a message uh, right out of response, as you see here. And then, as I said before, we assign our message and the new message m the byte array, and it automatically gets the behavior as if it would be an object. So the next thing is setting the state and as I said we have to do that in a temporary array so we're gonna do states and we define the row with the slot so we do m dot slot and the input is the column m dot input and you see that's that's the handy feature. If you create a structure, you can uh, easily access the parts of the message. It's not so necessary with just a four byte long command, but it's quite good to know how to do it, especially when you're working with uh, longer protocols later on. And then we set 
this to m dot state. And whenever we changed a value inside our temporary array, we have to assign that to our actual output arrays here. And the way we do that is we hand over a row from states to its row in our boolean array. So this is the boolean array for slot 1. And we hand over the complete row of our uh, temporary states array. In this case, the row 1. And it represents slot 1. And we will do that for every output array. And change is true. That's just a little convention that informs the nodes that are connected to the script that a value has changed. We press on compile. We see there are no errors. We save and close. And then all we have to do is connect our array indexes to our output arrays. And we do that one by one. Slot 1, slot 2, and of course we have to connect our input with the output of our serial node, the last message in this case. And uh, as I know that I'm sending commands from slot 4, we go to slot 4 outputs, be sure that you're in live mode, we start our emulator, and as you see, if I'm sending values for the different states, the value changes. And now you can hook up animations, events, or whatever you want to this state.